Salutations. Welcome to Pod Mortem. I'm Renee Hunter Vasquez, joined as always by my co host, my husband, and my brother. Hi, I'm John Paul Vasquez. Hi, I'm Travis Hunter. This week, we were recording live from the Halloween Parade in Warren Valley, Ohio, discussing the 2007 horror anthology, Trick or Treat. This film was written and directed by Michael Dougherty, expanding upon the 1997 animated short, Season's Greetings. Season's Greetings introduced us to the now-beloved Halloween icon, Sam, who is featured heavily in this film. Despite many roadblocks in its path and its eventual straight-to-DVD release, Trick or Treat has become a Halloween staple and a favorite among horror fans. This film was suggested to us by our parents, Travis and Nisa Hunter. Thanks for the suggestion. So what did you guys think about Trick or Treat the first time you saw it? I don't remember the first, first time Mm I seen it, but I know we've seen this movie quite a few times. Mm -hmm. Uh, I really enjoy this movie. It's short, but it doesn't seem like it. No, no it's surprisingly short. They fit in so much stuff. Yeah, it's like. There's not a wasted moment. What is moment. it, like an hour 22 or something? Yeah. But it doesn't feel that way. No. no. It's really good. Oddly, I don't remember the exact situation the first time I saw it, but I do know that it was so good that I bought the Blu-ray for it. Right. Which was not a common occurrence of right. me <laughs> at that time. So it just goes to show how good it was. But it's, for me personally, one of the best horror anthologies I've ever seen. Oh, I totally agree. It's so cohesive and focused, and I love the interplay yes. between the stories. Typically, a, a horror anthology, you got your frame story yeah. that you cut to, and they're like, wow, that was crazy. Well, here's the next <laughs> here's story, the next guys. Yeah. <laughs> but in this, it's just like, no, here's the movie, and there's all this interplay, uh, almost Easter egg yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know? No, I'm a sucker for anthologies. And I think that's, like you said, one thing that really sets this movie apart mm-hmm. is that it, they're all laced together. And sometimes in ways that it's blink and you'll miss it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when you see it, you're like, oh, that's <laughs> that's them or whatever. Any movie that rewards the viewer for paying attention. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah, I I do. I agree a thousand percent with the, what you are saying. The way it is together. Yeah. yeah. And it's still a story or different stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then like because other ones like uh, Creepshow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're the main story. And then there just tells you a bunch of little stories. But this one is everything yeah, together. Like, and it's, it's like still, a full movie. Yeah. It still also, makes sense. Yeah. 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 It's just crazy to me that this movie was supposed to be released in 2007 for Halloween. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they didn't want Trick or Treat in competition with Saw 4. So they <laughs> shelved it. See, part of me understands the competition aspect of it. But at the same time, there's no way they're not going to make their money back on this feature. I yeah. mean, and I feel like nobody believed in it because like... Like I said, they didn't want it to compete with Saw 4. And then also, Michael Dougherty had co-wrote Superman Returns. That Brian (laughs) Singer, who produced this, had directed and also produced. So they were like, that was shit. Like, we don't really trust these guys, basically. How can you compare... I know, I know. Superman Returns to Trick or Treat. That's the bullet eye one, right? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I mean, come on. But it was not well received. Even that, this to Saw, this is not the same... No, like they're two no. different yeah. flavors of horror. And, but in all fairness, Saw kind of controlled horror in movie theaters in October and Halloween. But yeah. at the same time, you're telling yeah. me that this movie couldn't compete at least a yeah. little bit. Yeah, if but everybody's in the mood Halloween season, and there are people that love horror that aren't into gore. True. And it got pretty gory around Saw what, Four towards yeah. that time. Not only that, though, but Saw they're just movies about people dying in crazy ways this is actually about halloween yeah yeah yes Um, yeah it's about halloween but then they shelved it after making them change the title because this title was supposed to be season's greetings Mm -hmm. because of the cartoon right but they were like no that sounds too much like christmas Mm. so this went through several title changes and then landed on trick or treat But there was already a movie coming out called Trick or Treat. So now it's Trick or Treat. You know, it's funny. A movie that nobody fucking knows. I don't know anything about that movie. And so they had to go through all that, jump through all those hoops just to be shelved in 2007. Then it was supposed to come out Halloween 2008. Shelved again in Halloween 2008. It was supposed to come out Halloween 2009. Shelved again in 2009 just to come out straight to DVD. 
almost like it's buried. Yes. And then it hits and then everybody loves it. It's, and it's, it's like a cult. Fantastic. You know, and this is so crazy because this is the second feature directorial debut. Actually, the third that we've talked about this month and the second one that had studios not wanting to release it. It's... Only <laughs> to be released to cult acclaim. Yeah. It's like, damn, man. What the, yeah. what the yeah. hell? chance. But uh, like I said, for me, I watch this. I mean, I watch it throughout the year, but every October I'm watching Trick or Treat. Oh, absolutely. Every Halloween season, it's a thing. Like, it's a tradition. It, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, I it kind of bums me out that they nobody believed in them enough to give them a shot. But hey. this movie's great. Mm-hmm. So when did it come out? Come out? 2009, straight 2009, to DVD. Straight. Yeah. And Two years later. There's been lower rumblings of Trick or Treat 2 ever since. And I'm here. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here I'm for waiting. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, before we drive this film into a rock quarry, we would like to issue a warning for spoilers. Podmortem is a very in-depth podcast, and in thoroughly discussing horror films, we have no choice but to spoil a thing or two. If you don't wish to be spoiled, please go watch the film, then come back and enjoy the show. If you've already seen the film or don't care about spoilers, then let's ring the doorbell. So the film opens on a black and white video on the safety rules to trick-or-treating. Always stay on the sidewalks, never go to a stranger's house, and never go out alone. I love this, first Mm -hmm. of all. I heard on the director's commentary, this was not in the original film. It was actually cut into the trailer for the film, and they loved it so much that they added it. (laughs) Well, it's cool. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, Because it's really easy to mess something up like that. (laughs) And then it's cheesy, and it's like, ah, we didn't need this shit. Yeah, but But no, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the video interrupts, and it turns into a jack-o'-lantern face. We pan out, and the pumpkin is on a street in front of a house. We see someone's legs walk by with a wheelbarrow being pulled behind them. That person almost immediately gets hit by a car that stops abruptly. (laughs) We'll talk more about that Mm, later. Emma and Henry, played by Leslie Bibb and Tom O'Pennicott, return home. This is their house. Mm -hmm. Emma is clearly annoyed that it's Halloween at all, I but guess. she's in that sweet Bender costume. It's so cool. <laughs> <Are you? laughs> she's not having a good time. It's huge, though. Yeah. I don't know how I wouldn't be able to navigate with that thing on. But Henry's, like, apologizing. She's, she's not happy. When she goes to blow out the candle in the jack-o'-lantern, he stops her, and he says that it's ancient tradition that they leave it on, but Emma doesn't care, and she mm. blows the candle out anyway. Is that exclusive to this town? Because I've never heard that before. No, but they mention later that this town takes it very seriously. Also, I feel like we covered in Final Destination, if somebody has a superstition, just respect it. Yeah, just do it. Like, just respect it, dude. Don't be an asshole. But suddenly, our view is from the point of view of someone obviously wearing a mask from across the street. As Emma and Henry walk up to the house to go inside... This mask view follows them, checking the jack-o'-lantern. It's like, (laughs) did this bitch really just blow that candle out? Checking the (laughs) jack-o'-lantern before they start walking alongside the gate. I feel like there's a lot of homages to... Absolutely. I mean, when you think about it, what other film has Mm -hmm. an opening that features a first-person perspective of a person in a mask? You know, there's a lot of really sly and not rip-off-y... No, that's not I a have, word. I, <laughs> but, not rip off at, at all. But you know what I mean? There's so many. And it just shows Michael Dougherty's respect yes, for the genre. Absolutely. And I respect that. For sure. But back in normal view, Henry on the porch is trying to get some action going. But Emma's not having it. She <laughs> well, wants uh, these decorations down now. He steals a cheeky glance, if he you does. will. Yeah. He <laughs> stares <laughs> right at her ass. He does. <laughs> Henry says that he's going to take the decorations down, but she's like, no, you're going to sleep till 12 and then play video games until four. My mom's coming in the morning and she's going to freak out. That? See, what's yeah. Literally, kids are still trick-or-treating outside. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, why does your mom hate Halloween? No. I don't, I don't and why are you it. looking at my schedule? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is me time. Yeah, so... But she says that she'll just do it herself. And she finally softens and tells Henry to go inside and put on the tape. She says that she hates Halloween before going into the yard to take the decorations down. Now, when she said that, I was like, well, hope she goes first. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Emma. I can't get with that. No. Like duct tape? Like he's going to tape himself? <laughs> or what? Yeah. We will, we will see. Right. Yeah. Oh. Inside, <laughs> inside, Henry happily slides a tape labeled Nature Special into oh. the VCR. Is this the Bloodhound Gang? It's like some Nat Geo <laughs> shit. He's just... 
It's just the pelican can eat. Yeah, it's <laughs> <That's> what <laughs> he likes. Four times it's five. Eight. Pelican fly. <laughs> yeah. Back outside, Emma unplugs the lights, which I don't know why she would do that first, but I don't know either. She yeah, unplugs I the know. lights and starts taking down the decorations in the dark. Now the decorations are really cool. Oh yeah, it's a bunch of sheets set up on like. I don't know I don't wood yeah, crosses. crosses yeah, yeah wood frames to make it look like a bunch of ghosts in the yard and then there's like severed arms and stuff hanging from the tree it's mm-hmm. it's cool and the way she whips them down yeah you feel like you're gonna see something every time but you yes. don't it's really there's cool. a lot of antis- anticipation built up in that yes but she smiles at some trick-or-treating kids but her smile drops when she sees someone standing across the street wearing a mask looking in her direction two things one I thought you hated Halloween so why yeah. are you smiling at these kids that, i noticed that too i was like right? why why does that make you so happy but a minute ago you were like fuck, fuck this yeah, yeah. Just be like, stupid kids yeah. but the second thing in the edge of the frame behind this man that's staring in her direction you see a group of kids who oddly kind of look uh like zombies for maybe a split second i wonder if that'll come up later hmm I did not. I'm not even going to lie. I didn't notice that at all. Yeah, I didn't see that at all. It's honestly (laughs) one of my favorite things about this movie is blink and you'll miss it. Blink and you'll miss it. Like literally. But finally a car pulls up and the kid in the mask was just a teenager waiting for a ride. So again, (laughs) more anticipation. We saw somebody in a mask looking Mm -hmm. at them. It's not him. Right. He's like, oh, I was just staring at some yeah. stupid lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, fucking bitch kept yeah. looking at she me. It's Halloween, I heard. <laughs> Um, but this whole time, Emma has been about to pull another sheet down, another built up moment of anticipation. When she removes the sheet, nothing's there. But randomly, something jumps out of the decorations box unexpectedly, and it's hidden by one of the sheets flying up. Emma screams. Mm-hmm. Back inside, Henry has fallen asleep on the bed and wakes up from the screaming. He looks at the TV, which has porn playing, which was the tape. <laughs> so did he just get his Almond Joy and crash out? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Um, but the porn is playing, and I guess he attributes the screaming to the video and <sighs> smiles and just lays back yeah, down. I, uh, <laughs> I don't like, know what was oh, going yeah, on. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Good night. Yeah. Back outside, trapped inside the sheet with someone, Emma continues to scream as she falls out onto the sidewalk. Trick-or-treaters watch as we see a pumpkin-shaped lollipop bitten into sharp edges come at Emma's throat. The trick-or-treaters leave as blood splatters onto the sheet, and then the attacker just pulls Emma back into the yard. Such a very small detail that they added. Her blood steams as it hits the sheet. That's so cool. Because it's a cold Halloween night. On the commentary, they said that they were boiling buckets of fake blood in order to achieve that. <laughs> oh, That's so that. cool. And, and a like lot of people wouldn't even notice that. Yeah. Inside, Henry wakes up again, and he goes outside, and we see that all of the sheets that Emma had pulled down are back up on those posts. It's like, no, it's Halloween. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> he calls out for Emma before noticing a very realistic-looking arm hanging from the tree among the fake ones. A light goes on under one of the sheets and Henry cautiously removes it to reveal Emma's dead and bloody body with a giant lollipop stuck in her mouth, kind of making a smile. Maybe she likes Halloween now. Uh, (laughs) I don't think she has a choice. The worst part is that Halloween's ruined for him. Yeah. And even worse than that, he has to take down the decorations now (laughs) and deal with his mother-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just confused. So he put the tape on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And just fell asleep. (laughs) Yeah. And then just passed out. Yeah. Wasn't he supposed to wait? I thought that was the point. He's like, Uh, she'll wake me up. (laughs) The shot of Emma's face turns into a drawing and it's in a comic book panel as the opening credits roll over more comic frames, promising us four tales of terror. Does this seem familiar to anything that we may have discussed in the past? Oh, Creepshow? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a bold homage because you knew people would draw those comparisons. Yeah, but it's like it's in the best way. Yes, exactly. I love the way that they did it. And then we get the title Trick or Treat on the cover of a comic book that has Sam on the mm-hmm. front. They had originally just gone with a standard boring opening, they said. I'm so, I'm so glad And they then did. they were like, let's embrace the camp and, and just it, do it. it adds so much character to the movie. Yes, 100%. Um, and we see panels of events and characters that we're going to meet later. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's just cool. 
if I could just steal a second. Mm-hmm. So I love the opening yes. with the comics and all that. That was great. Mm-hmm. But first, he warned her. <laughs> he did. He warned her. Men don't get to say that we're right to women very often. <laughs> but, but, in he, case... but in this case, he did warn her and she didn't listen. Nope. And the the comic opening, like you were saying, is is great. That is, it's a bold move. It but is. It paid off. I yeah, would I would sure. enjoy this movie with the drink what the smoke what some friends what by myself uh, right any, like that yeah, yeah that is, yeah. is badass it's the just way fantastic. they did that so now we're outside and someone is walking down the street dragging a filthy candy bag behind them the camera is focused on the bag but subtly and slyly pans up a couple times to show a few characters that we're going to meet later mm-hmm. this is such a tight script yeah man like it, i'm so impressed it really is and Again, I know we already mentioned the runtime, but I'm just so impressed that this is able to be done in such a short amount of time. That's why I said it's, I know it's only an hour and 22, but it doesn't feel that way Mm -mm. because they put a lot in there and they didn't waste any time like at all. There was Mm -hmm. any, oh, let's cut a corner for this or let's, and if they did, I couldn't tell because everything makes sense and it's great. What's odd is that as we talked about this interplay, that was always planned, but It was really segmented into these different chapters like an anthology, Uh but then they decided to edit it to where they kind of are interspersed, where two stories are being told at the same time. I'm I'm very glad that they did that. So now we're at a parade, and the word earlier in the comic book (laughs) writing is in the corner, which is very cool. Mm -hmm. A reporter is reporting from the parade, telling us that we are in Warren Valley, Ohio, like I said, where Halloween traditions are taken very seriously. We see the parade is going on. Everyone's in costumes. They're partying. They're drinking. They're dancing. They're having a fantastic time. Yes. Why can't our town be like yeah, this? You no know what? shit, I, dude. You know? I even wrote that. I, was like, yeah, I wish we <laughs> had shit so like that. Great. I, wish I would not blow like out that. candles. I no, would no, no, take no, no, no. Like, I would follow all the all rules. rules. In a store, Lori, which her name is a nod to Lori Strode. Of course. Lori, played by Anna Paquin, her sister Danielle, played by Lauren Lee Smith, and their friends Maria, played by Rochelle Aitz, and Janet, played by Monica Delane. They're all in separate fitting rooms getting dressed in two costumes. First of all, Rochelle Aitz, be still my beating heart. No, she's Um, gorgeous. You know she's Rochelle from Left 4 Dead 2. (gasps) <gasps> no <laughs> yeah i love her even more now yeah. um Lori is kind of expressing that she just wants to go trick-or-treating <laughs> like whatever happened to just trick-or-treating yeah. but the rest of the girls want to put on promiscuous costumes and go out which i mean do it hey, you know that sounds fuck. great um we get close-ups on parts of their bodies but we don't see any faces yet and a little boy is going from room to room kind of peeping in on them <laughs> Now, the little peeper is played by seven-year-old Quinn Lord, who also plays Sam, oh. which is <laughs> really, really incredible. cool. Yeah. They said on the commentary that he did such a great job playing Sam, they felt he deserved to show his face oh, in the movie at some point. I so they gave him that. this little tiny role. I love it. Um, but the girls are all talking about crazy Halloween stories and stuff that they've done in years prior. When they mention that Maria picked up a man who turned out to be a woman, Maria says, who cares? They all taste the same to her. And a lady is like, there are children. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's the kid's mother. And it's like, hey, maybe admonish yeah, your kid for beeping. <laughs> Instead of, I mean, and, and stop being so sexy in there. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you mad at them? So they all come out except for Lori. Danielle is dressed as Cinderella, Maria is Snow White, and Janet is Bo Peep. Lori finally comes out when Danielle's like, I'll huff and I'll puff, you know, come (laughs) out. Um, But she's dressed in a very modest little Red Riding Hood costume compared to the booby costumes that the rest of them are wearing. She complains that she looks like she's five, and she's not wrong. Like, it's a, it looks like a little kid's costume. But Danielle insists that this is tradition, and she looks great, but the other two are just laughing at her. Now, the next step in the tradition is that they have to find dates. As they check out, Danielle tells the cashier that they're in town for a party at Sheep's Meadow, and she invites him to join after he gets off work. And he's basically like, holy Mm -hmm. dog, I will. (laughs) Outside, this kid, Charlie, played by Brett Kelly, is walking down the street, knocking all of the jack-o'-lanterns off of the fence posts. So it's like, you little yeah. shit. Where in your mind are you like, oh, that's what I'm going to do? No. <laughs> you know? 
I, I was never a little asshole, so I never, can't. I can't get not, into that. No, man. You know, but fuck this kid. But he comes upon a house that has candy sitting out with a sign that says, please help yourself to just one piece of candy. So, of course, he takes a whole handful. And when he picks up the entire bowl to dump it into his bag, mm -hmm. someone interrupts him saying that that can't be good for his diabetes. And it's like, <laughs> oh, shit. How do you know my health is not, uh, yeah. uh, not a HIPAA violation? <laughs> <laughs> But it's Stephen Wilkins, played by Dylan Baker, played I, greatly Fantastically. Yeah. by Dylan Baker, who insists that Charlie sit down and stay for a minute. This is his house, and he's just arrived back home with the grocery bag. Mm -hmm. Back on the street outside the store, Danielle is lecturing Lori that she always waits for people to come to her, and she kind of chastises her for still being a virgin. And <laughs> Yeah, no, that was... I thought that was weird. <laughs> but uh, in this scene, I didn't, I don't know why I never noticed it before. Mm -hmm. But when I watched it for the show, they bump into Bender and her boyfriend. Yes. yes. In yes. the street. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's again, this interplay. I yeah. love and it so much. And if you're so not much. astutely paying attention, like no, if it's yeah. your first time nope. seeing it, you might not even notice genuinely. But Danielle softens and tells Lori to just be herself. Lori explains that she just wants her first time to be special. And Maria's like, look, you can't hesitate. She takes Janet and they go over to the film crew that's there for that news segment that we saw. Mm -hmm. And they're like, look, we have this great party to go to, but no dates. And just like that, now three of them have dates and Lori doesn't. Back at Steven's house... Steven and Charlie are sitting on the porch and Steven's like, nah, help, you know, help yourself to the candy. See, I'm sorry, but if I'm that kid, I'm not sticking around. Yeah. He said stick around very threateningly, first of all. Well, I think that there's there might be a reason for that. And we'll talk about that in a second. I think he is on the registry, so I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I would leave. But so I am gone. I exactly. would just leave because it'd be like, fuck, I, I'm in trouble. I Take got my busted. Yeah. Free candy to go, please. <laughs> Steven pulls a new knife out of this grocery bag. He had to buy a new one, I guess, because all of his are too dull mm -hmm. to carve this jack-o'-lantern that he is in the process of carving when yeah. he had to go to the store. <laughs> um, but he resumes working on the jack-o'-lantern. He tells Charlie that, believe it or not, he was just like him when he was a kid until his dad set him straight. As he is aggressively carving an eye yeah. into this pumpkin, yeah. He says that tonight is about respecting the dead because tonight is the one night that the dead and everything else get to roam free and visit us. <laughs> I'm going to go to the store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says that all of these traditions were started to protect us, but nobody cares anymore. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, Charlie starts coughing and choking and Stephen reminds him of another important Halloween tradition. Always check your candy. Charlie starts vomiting up this vile liquid chocolate. Yeah, I was going to say, it just it, looked like chocolate. It's, it's, it's disgusting. The thing is, is that, okay, first of all, I just said last week, you man, did. I'm glad that <laughs> no they didn't vomit. show puke and then they're like, here's eight gallons yeah. of it, sir. But, yeah, that was a lot. No, it's, <laughs> like, a lot. it's a projectile. It's a, it's a bunch. It's I, a I, lot. I believe it is made of chocolate and caro syrup. It looks like chocolate. Michael yeah. Dougherty said he tasted it and it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but how does one check their candy to begin with? Because they always tell you to do that, but I don't know what the fuck yeah. you're supposed to do. And the, yep, looks like chocolate down the, the hatch. The funny <laughs> thing is, people say that, but the only record, excuse my my true crime buff coming out. No, but yes. The only yes. record of this happening was with tampered pixie sticks that a father did to his own children's candy on Halloween. It wasn't about like, I went to that stranger's no. house. And, no. It was the dad's like, here's your fucking <laughs> pixie stick. <Yeah. laughs> but I don't know. I guess you're supposed to open the wrapper and rip every I piece guess. in half. I don't, I yeah, don't know. Yeah, you just ruined all your candy <laughs> exactly. now. Okay, eat up, Timmy. It's like, I don't like my candy. Want this. Now I gotta eat it all. my because... fingers all over it. <laughs> yeah. You wash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Charlie collapses onto Steven's lap and Steven just coolly takes out a, a sucker and starts eating it and kind of looks around. He didn't check that sucker, though. Yeah, he, did he didn't. Do as I say. And Hypocrite, I was like, yeah. exactly. exactly. And wasn't like, there just people all in the street? Yeah. yeah. A minute ago. It's Halloween. Yeah. Well, he, he kind of looks around, and he's like, you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, But he pulls Charlie inside, and he's annoyed that Charlie is, like, now vomiting blood down the front of Steven's shirt. 
So immediately after Stephen gets Charlie inside the house, trick-or-treaters start banging on the door, and they are not deterred when he turns the lights off. No. They're like, we, They're like, we see your ass in there. <laughs> <laughs> so he opens the door covered in blood, and they think it's a costume. But the kids identify him as Principal Wilkins. And I think this is why Charlie was like, well, fuck, I guess I better yeah, sit down. I'll hear about okay. it on Monday. Yes. Yeah. He's That's got true. He's got power over yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. But the girl asks for Stephen's jack-o'-lantern for a UNICEF scavenger hunt. And he says yes after he's sure that she's not going to smash it. So I think he's like real tuned into these rules as yeah. well. Respect. Yeah. The boy of the group is like eyeing him suspiciously, but then they leave and they reveal that Sam has been standing behind them. He takes a chocolate bar and just skedaddles, like goes about his business. Now, Sam looks really cool. He's wearing what looks like, have you ever seen those old like 1930s photos of people in Halloween costumes? Yeah, yeah, horrifying. Yeah. Or even, I was going to say, <laughs> so even the scary. cute costumes are fucking scary. <laughs> That's kind of what he looks like. He's got like the orange like jumpsuit and then a bag head. Yeah. It, he it, is, and he's adorable. Yes. <laughs> he's somehow adorable uh, and, and like scary. <laughs> the crazy thing about this sequence is that it was almost cut from the film and we would not have met Sam yet. Huh. The director has said on commentary that he had to fight to get this scene in the film because he felt that the studio wanted to go for a straight horror feel. Oh, man. And this scene kind of allows you to be like, okay, well, there's going to be some dark comedy here as he's like trying to bring him in the house yes. and he's getting puked on and the yeah. kids are there. It's like almost like some sitcom situation, just <laughs> dark as shit. Yeah. But I'm glad that it's there because no, Sam... Yeah. Is awesome, and He's I'd love great. to see him earlier. I mean, it. I I feel like that made it better. You see him, but it's just like, what the fuck? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you don't get any more. No. Yeah. It's just a taste, like just a little and hint. The little boy looked at the floor and looked at his shirt. He was when like, he walked away. Yeah, well, they walked like, up the puke stairs too. Yeah. They did. I was oh, I was yeah, thinking the same what... thing. They're like, what the hell? Uh, we can skip this house. Yeah, we don't need. <laughs> Back with Lori and her crew, everyone except her is getting in the news van to go out to the party. Danielle is like, there's going to be extra guys there. I'll help you get one. And Lori's like, no, I'll just meet you there. Well, we're not supposed to get in strange vans. Uh, so I thought. Yeah. Well, I mean. That's not a Halloween rule. Yeah, <laughs> that's not the only rule being broken. But True. Back at Steven's house, after passing a table with some ominous looking bottles on it, I guess this is how he tampered with the candy. I'm I just guess. inferring here. But Steven opens up a closet and takes out a sack and a giant meat cleaver that's just sitting on the shelf. <laughs> he drags a body in the sack outside and then removes a tarp from a grave that he had already dug. So this dude is ready. He's prepared. <laughs> yeah, He's ready to go. Suddenly, his son, Billy, screams from his upstairs window that he's back from trick-or-treating. Steven is trying to keep him quiet and tells him to go watch <laughs> Charlie Brown, to which Billy replies that Charlie Brown is an asshole. Well, <laughs> and mm. something about Steven chastising his son for his language while standing in front of a <laughs> dead body that he's trying to bury is just hilarious. No, it's fantastic. It's so funny. And Lucy's the asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> to be fair. I mean, this kid's a, he's not watching it right. Yeah, to be fair. But Steven rolls the sack into the grave, and just as he starts to shove dirt into the hole his neighbor's dog sticks his head through a hole in the fence and starts barking loud steven jumps into the hole and we don't see it but he breaks off one of the fingers of the body and throws it over the fence to the dog now which I'm like that's evidence like yeah, I mean, but anyway um and, and uh, just for a second in the cats versus dogs debate <laughs> this would have never been a problem if that was a cat yeah. the dogs are fucking nosy <laughs> you gotta give them fingers it's yeah. like come on cat's man. gonna mind its own business exactly but Steven's neighbor, Mr. Krieg, played by Brian Cox, comes out to get the dog, who is named Spite. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It's like, why would you name your dog? Steven hides in the grave with these bodies, I'm guessing plural. Yeah. Whoever is in that sack, because it's not Charlie. No, he has like a glove on. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly starts whimpering. And Mr. Krieg hears, forcing Steven to identify himself. Krieg literally says, what are you doing? Hiding bodies? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. How much did you see? <laughs> Steven makes an excuse that it's his septic system. And the whole time he's talking to him, he's kicking and standing on this body who has <laughs> like 
started to scream. Yeah. Again, this is some sitcom shit. It yeah. is. It's funny in the darkest way. Yes. But as Krieg goes to go back inside, Stephen tells him happy Halloween and Krieg goes, screw you. And well, <laughs> back into his house. That, that, that guy's a dick, man. <laughs> He's just trying to hide the body. Let yeah, him. Yeah, let him get yeah, him let him done. But then that body reaches out and grabs Stephen's leg. And just before he strikes it with the shovel, Billy comes back to the window and yells that he's ready to carve his jack-o'-lantern now, but he needs help with the eyes. And as a parent, this was funny to me, too, because it's like, yeah. just sit your <laughs> ass down. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I've already definitely. told you to be yes. quiet. It's just funny. But then he asks if he can go to the parade with Steven later. And Steven says, no, he has a date. He continues to wrestle and promises to make caramel apples with Billy after they finish carving the jack-o'-lantern if he'll just be quiet. This is enough to make Billy go back inside, but he comes back once more saying, <laughs> don't forget to help me with the eyes. Steven brings the shovel down finally and it goes black. Cut to Stephen watering the filled in grave <laughs> and mocking his son, including daddy. I wish mommy was still alive. Yeah, that complaint. He tacked it on at the end, but it's kind of the most like, important one. Yeah. yeah. And it makes you wonder, did you also? Yes. Uh, no, that's a that. I mean, it's kind easy, of his shit. Yeah, it's an easy jump to make. Mm hmm. But as he's walking back up the stairs to go inside, we see Mr. Krieg banging on his window from inside his own house, begging Stephen for help. Mm -hmm. Stephen says, screw you, and goes back inside just before we see something tackle Mr. Krieg. It's what I like to call a new radicals moment. You get what you give now. <laughs> <laughs> if he hadn't have said I screw mean, you earlier, maybe right? Maybe he'd be a little more inclined I mean, to help. On, yeah. But inside, Billy scares the shit out of Steven. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does. He's wearing a yes. fucking... Uh... And then asks if they can go carve the jack-o'-lantern now. At this point, I noticed that Billy is dressed very similarly to Chucky. Yeah. Yes. I... Yeah, he is. Exactly. Very... More with the... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you hear in the background, and I think they even show it for a second, but I can't remember, but it's uh, the original House on Haunted Hill with Vincent Price right. is playing. And Michael Dougherty was like, so Vincent Price has a cameo in Trick or Treat. Oh, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> that was pretty cool. He's in my movie. Exactly. But Steven says that they can carve the jack-o'-lantern now and they go downstairs. But as they go down to the basement, we see that Steven is hiding a knife behind his back. So it's like, oh, shit. Yeah. Poor Billy. Yeah. As Billy is busying himself at the table in the basement, Stephen dramatically comes behind him with the knife. He places his hand on Billy's head and Billy says, let's carve a scary face this time. Stephen agrees and then brings the knife down. He raises it back up and it's got blood on it, but we pan out to see that Billy is fine. <laughs> Stephen teaches his son how to hold the knife and Billy reminds him to help him with the eyes. We finally see that they're not about to carve a pumpkin at all, but Charlie's severed head. I approve of this father-son <laughs> bonding. bonding time. Yeah, I, I can't wait to have a family of my own. Yes. <laughs> One day I too hope to show the kids how to <laughs> carve a pumpkin. The real you spirit have of to Halloween. help them with the eyes. So is this how his dad set him straight? Oh, oh maybe. You know, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, dude. And his father's father. Yeah. You know? <laughs> that's crazy. At another house, the same three trick-or-treaters that went to Stephen's house ring the doorbell on this one. We have Macy, played by Britt McKillop, Sarah, played by Isabel DeLuce, and Chip, played by Alberto Gisi. They ring the doorbell to find their teacher, Mrs. Henderson, drunk <laughs> and wearing a sexy cat costume as feels good. <laughs> place from the Tony yeah. Tony <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There are some questionable activities going on inside this party. What do you think as a kid seeing that your teacher's like that? <laughs> well, she offers them a drink. Well, she no, kinda, I know, but she's, she's shaking her, her ass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this school, man. They're I teachers know. Are, yeah. and principal. Yeah. Some rough stuff. Macy asks for a pumpkin, just like she did at Steven's house, but she just gives them candy and sends them on their way, telling them to watch out for monsters. They leave disappointed. And <laughs> Chip makes a comment that he saw Coach Taylor <laughs> dressed as a hot dog, but fucking a pig. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> Son, calm down. Yeah, yeah. That's disgusting. Where, how far back do I need to rewind? <laughs> when did you see when this? Uh, this happen? When did this happen? Where? <laughs> 
So their friend Schrader, played by Jean-Luc Bilodeau, comes up to them and he has three pumpkins in a shopping cart. When Macy is disappointed that he only has three, Schrader says some kid was going down the street smashing them. Of course, he's dead now. Of course, yeah. he's dead now. So it's fine. Yeah. He asks if three is enough, and Macy says almost. They come to a house whose yard is literally filled with jack-o'-lanterns. Rhonda, played by Sam Todd, comes out, and they whisper to each other that she's an idiot savant. Now, on the subject of those pumpkins, mm-hmm. two things there. One, most of them are fake. They're plastic, uh-huh. but... They're made by a company that makes plastic carvable pumpkins. <laughs> oh, so you can keep them. Uh, yeah. Oh, That's cool. Right, yeah. This is from the commentary, but yeah. also all the pumpkins out there lit, Michael Dougherty said was an homage to Carrie in the scene towards the end with all the candles. <gasps> oh, yes. Right. They said they even used Damn that it, as a reference for the storyboard. Oh, I so, love it. So again, it's just incredible. I love it. So they, Sarah, Macy, and Chip leave Schrader to turn on his charm with Rhonda. He asks Rhonda if she carved all these pumpkins by herself, and she says yes. She even made her costume. They introduce themselves, and she smiles kind of shyly at Mm. him. Back at the parade, (laughs) the party is bumping, and we go down an alley to find a couple making out against a building. The woman takes off her mask and says that they should go get another drink. But when she reaches for the man's mask, he stops her and they continue to kiss. He kisses her arms and neck and she's enjoying it until she looks down to see that there's blood running down her arms. Mm -hmm. The guy backs away with blood on his mouth and he parts his lips to reveal vampire fangs. So it's like a Jack the Ripper Dracula. It's a Jack the Ripper kind of situation (laughs) going on here. The woman runs away and screams, but as I said, the party is bumping. Yeah. Nobody's oh, yeah. paying attention to her. She stumbles into the street and grabs Emma. Right, Bender. From yeah. Bender <laughs> yes. She asks for help, and Henry says she's just drunk and pulls Emma away. The woman turns, and the vampire is standing right behind her. He flails his cape, obscuring our view, but we hear her screaming. So she was safe. Just keep going. Yeah, Just dude. keep running. Why did she you stop? You're like, well, I tried one person, I guess. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm dead. That's it, yeah. Um, the next thing we see is the vampire propping her body up against a store and closing her eyes. There are people literally right next to her that don't even notice. The one thing I will say, and I was like, God damn it. Hmm. Okay, so when she sees Emma... Mm-hmm. And her boyfriend, she's like, or he's like, she's drunk. She's yeah. fine. But then it pans over to a crowd of people that are right there. The ones you said, they all have fake wounds on. And they're yeah. all like, oh. it's like, come on. Did we, <laughs> we didn't really need that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's her costume. She's with them. She's with yeah. them. <laughs> I just, that was a little like, mm, did we really need that? But it's still fine. My thing to drag the Ripper is it's like, you're making it sweet with a cute girl in Halloween. Why do you gotta? It's not enough. It wasn't enough. It's not enough. My God damn. But he walks off from her body and just blends into the rest of the parade. Back to the teens. They're all walking together and Rhonda is pulling a wheelbarrow full of pumpkins. Mm -hmm. She's enlightening Chip on the history of Halloween. And it's I thought it was cool and adorable because she goes on this whole spiel and he just looks at her and she's like I like your eye patch (laughs) dude she knows her shit she does and she says Samhain instead of Sam Hain which I respect yes Macy opens a gate and leads them into a rock quarry and Schrader is not impressed Macy says that they have come here to respect the dead Sarah realizes where they are and when she starts to tell the story Macy stops her then Chip is like oh we're at the site of the Halloween school bus massacre and Macy tells him don't call it that what are we gonna call it yeah Yeah. (laughs) Sarah starts to tell the story again but Macy tells her to shut up so she can tell it as she starts to tell the story that happened on Halloween 30 years ago we flash back to that day I love this segment yes. so much. Mm-hmm. Yes. I am going to say it is beautifully shot. Yeah. The sepia tones, the transition with the leaf. Yes. It's just fantastic. This is just excellent filmmaking. Might be my favorite part of the whole movie. That That's totally fair because it's very, very cool. But we see a school bus with eight troubled and mentally disturbed kids. They're all in Halloween costumes that look great like yeah, they're no, so fantastic. creepy on um, the commentary michael dougherty said that they were inspired by old photography from ralph meatyard and diane arbus mm. of like old halloween costumes if you go and look at meatyard's photography 
Holy shit! Uh, oh, it's it's incredible. Well, I these are, urge you to do that. These are so creepy because they're amazing. Yeah. yeah, but Macy explains that the driver took a different route that day. The parents apparently didn't want to care for these children anymore. They gathered money together and made a proposition to the bus driver to do the unthinkable. But when the bus driver starts to take his different route, a child dressed as Dracula notices because he keeps track of the house numbers. Mm -hmm. As the bus is going by, they pass Sam, yeah, who's looking at a dead bird. And this is 30 years ago. Uh -huh. so, so you're like, hmm. wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so instead of taking them home, the bus driver takes them to this rock quarry. We see the driver stepping on the gas and just driving through the gate. We see him checking their chains. All the children are chained into the seats and he's giving them all candy. The vampire boy, he doesn't have chains chains. He has like wrist restraints. Yeah. So he's able to free himself as the driver is checking the kids at the back of the bus. He keeps saying that he wants to go home and starts the bus up. The driver tries to go to him and is tripped by one of the other kids, which is like good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the vampire boy, confused and scared, drives the bus straight into the quarry. There's a feature out on the Blu-ray where they show how the shot was done. Mm -hmm. And I'm a practical effects junkie. Like, mm -hmm. it's my yeah. shit. But this was accomplished by using such expert CG that you wouldn't have even known. It's literally the real bus going off the cliff. That looks The water real. is not real. <gasps> it's a composite shot of them sinking a miniature in a very small amount of water and then just basically <laughs> pasting it in with matte That's painting. Crazy. It looks good, though. It's incredible. Yeah, it looks good. And so, I mean, CG, when used right. Yeah, obviously. You know, yeah. it can be pretty effective and incredible. So I... As a kid, I also liked to go do hood rat shit, <laughs> but not mess with the dead or like, no. you know what I mean? Don't, don't do that. Kids. No, that's don't do that. Good advice. <laughs> um, but we see their masks and a pumpkin floating in the water of the quarry. Macy says that the driver was never heard from again, but we see him alive coming out of the water. Mm -hmm. She also says that the bus was never found and it could still be down there along with those kids. But like, of course, wouldn't it be down there? It would have, I mean, unless they got it. Where else would it be? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the bus disappeared. Yeah. Right. It's gone. There's the a magic neat... school bus. Yeah. Oh, shit. God. It says right there, ghoul bus. <laughs> <laughs> but we get this really cool sweeping shot of the driver climbing up those rocks mm -hmm. all the way back up to the kids in present day. It's so, no, like, it's again, great. expertly done. Yeah. It's so good. But back in present day at the quarry, Macy says that they have eight jack-o'-lanterns for the eight lost souls. They're going to leave them down there by the lake as an offering for the dead. I don't mean to rag on our town or nothing like that, but <laughs> why don't we have cool urban legends like this? <laughs> <laughs> like <sighs> the camera pans out at this point and it was striking to me to see how small these kids look oh, compared yeah. to this giant foggy quarry. It just really added to like the these kids should not be yeah, here. No. Moment. Where no. are your parents? Yes. Again, Head red shit fun. <laughs> Don't this. do that. Not this. Don't do that. The next thing we see is Schrader flipping a switch on an old elevator. He tells Rhonda that the pumpkin she's holding, she carved it, that her pumpkin is pretty, and Macy just fucking glares at them. Yeah, I <laughs> Macy's a jerk. It was she told him to turn on yeah, his charm. I know. Yeah, yeah she's full How out. How dare you do what I <laughs> yeah. said for you to she's do? She's straight up <laughs> glaring at them. Macy, Sarah, and Schrader get in the elevator, and when Chip and Rhonda try to join them, Macy slams the door. She says that the elevator can only safely hold three people. How the fuck does she know yeah. that? I didn't but, see the fucking certificate in the right. Right, right. thing. <laughs> Occupancy, three. Yeah. And some pumpkins. And what size? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she said she'll send the keys back up for them to bring down the rest of the pumpkins, and she just eyes Rhonda as they start descending in the <laughs> elevator. Back at the parade, it looks like things are winding down a little bit, and Lori is still looking for a date. We see her sitting by herself. Her phone rings. She answers it, and it's Danielle. But she notices that uh, Drac the Ripper... <laughs> <laughs> it's caught is, on. <laughs> ...is standing in the street just staring at her. Mm -hmm. Now, he has a mask on. He's, you know, we can't really see his face, but he's... Oh, he's there. Yeah. His mask almost looks like that magician who gave away all the tricks. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Danielle tells her that she found a guy for her. And Lori says, is he young? Is he cute? We pan over to see a guy in a giant baby costume. And Danielle's like, he's nice. I now, thought that was funny as what? hell. This guy, <laughs> but listen, this guy is C. Ernst Harth. And he played the giant baby in 13 Ghosts. Oh, So shit. this is okay. another Hell nod. Yeah. Very, right? I yeah. very, love that movie. I do too. Yeah. I thought that was very, very cool. See, because, okay, that is makes a lot more sense because I'm like, what grown ass man is like yes. yeah. Halloween costume? I'm going to be a, right. a big baby. Yes. <laughs> Huge baby. So I thought so that, that makes was a, a, lot a more very sense. cool yeah. little nod. And it's literally him. It's the same actor. Like, very cool. But Danielle's like, look, beggars can't be choosers. And she hangs up on her. As she makes the cashier from earlier stop kissing her neck, we hear wolves start howling. Mm -hmm. Back at the quarry, Rhonda and Chip hear these wolves too. Rhonda says that it's werewolves. <laughs> and then the elevator comes back up. But Chip looks at her like, this motherfucker ain't choking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, can you not? Yeah, right like, now? I'm um, scared to death. <laughs> as they start descending in this elevator, we hear Macy, Schrader, and Sarah, but all we can see are the lit up faces of their jack o' lanterns. Suddenly, they start screaming, and all the lights on the pumpkins go out one by one. So cool. Very, very yeah, cool and creepy in that looking. Fog. Chip starts flipping shit this dude just starts panicking but once they get to the bottom they start calling for them and nobody answers Rhonda gets out of the elevator and when chip is too scared she says just stay here and the candles will protect you Rhonda, brave as shit she gets yeah. shit done dude yeah. um is looking around and she finds the wrecked bus sticking out of the ground the masks are still floating in like this shallow water that's still there. What are those masks made of? Because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been a long time. They don't make them like that anymore. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> As she's slowly reaching to grab one of the masks, somebody pops out of the water and grabs her. She runs away scared. And then we see Chip on the ground with his face painted red, bloody... <laughs> His face is red uh -huh. and somebody is eating his guts. Yeah, <laughs> so that. things have escalated very quickly. Yes. She trips and her glasses fall off. When she can't find them, she keeps running. But the person that's chasing her steps on her glasses and breaks them. She's backing up to get away from these three figures and she falls and hits her head and like passes out. Yeah. Three masked faces look down on her and one goes, oh, shit. And another one asks if she's dead, but she wakes up and hits one of them and starts crawling yeah. away. But which I'm like, Ron is a oh, badass, yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, I'll fight a ghoul shit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but once they call her by name, she turns around and they take their masks off and surprise, it's Macy, Sarah, and Schrader. Mm hmm. Prank went a little too far. Way too far. Rhonda says that they're all dead, and Schrader's like, I'm sorry, it was just a bad joke. And Macy's like, no, it was a good joke. <sighs> Macy. The, <laughs> yeah, but the time spent rehearsing that and oh my God. hiding things down there. And, and they changed their costumes because yeah, they have like no, chains yeah. and shit now. Like, we got to return these sausages, but... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Thursday. Is that really like, what you want to not... spend your time doing? I mean, yeah. apparently. And what did Rhonda ever do to anybody? Yeah, That's a great know. question, too. But Schrader goes to comfort Rhonda. And when Chip tries to join him, Macy stops him. Like, you can't even comfort this girl. Schrader says to go pack everything up. And Macy's like, no. And he goes, she's scared out of her mind. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Where are we going with this? <laughs> are we what killing her? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> this poor girl. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. Um, so she rolls her eyes and Are relents. Killing her? <laughs> I mean, Jesus <laughs> Christ. What were you planning? Yeah. Chip, Macy, and Sarah go to pack up, I guess, all their stuff that they brought for this yeah. prank. Chip notices that there's a jack-o'-lantern by that little lake that's still lit, and Macy just fucking kicks it into the water. Breaking the rules. Yeah. Yep. Chip's like, if this was just a prank, then how is this bus here? And she's like, no, this part is true. And they reiterate that nobody knows what happened to the bus driver. So it's historical fiction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we played it's, fast and loose yes. with it. <laughs> but suddenly they hear whispering and Rhonda and Schrader hear them start screaming. At first, Schrader's like, this, these motherfuckers. But yeah. then he realizes that they're really scared and goes to check on them. Mm -hmm. He finds them and Macy is in a complete panic that there are other people here and they need to leave right now. And we can hear rustling and whispering like this is not no. part of the prank. 
finally we see the children from the bus still in their costumes just Ooh. like rotten mm-hmm. um loping toward them and i i read that they actually used actors with missing limbs to play these oh, kids wow. oh, man. isn't yeah. that cool that's yeah. really cool yeah. Oh, yeah of course they run and <laughs> the chains from their costumes are dragging behind them sarah's chain gets grabbed and she gets pulled back she sarah's done yeah. mm-hmm. uh, macy starts to go for her but straighter's like no like <laughs> Um, we can still live. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they finally reach the elevator and Rhonda is locked inside with all the pumpkins. She picks up the keys and instead of unlocking the door, she presses the button for the lift. So this is another new radicals moment. Yes. You get what you give. Yes. Also, I want to shout out very quickly. These kid actors are really they good. They are. Yeah. And I... I hate saying this, but I hate kids in movies. Yes, me too. Uh, yeah. a, a, yes. a kid actor not, can not ruin more, a movie. More often than not, yes. Yeah, yeah they can ruin it. Not that I hate kids, <laughs> but I hate kids in movies. No, they're, yes. they're but, great. Yeah, they did fantastic. I was genuinely surprised. Yes. And uh, the kid with the eye patch, what? Chip. 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 He had it on the whole time. As soon as I knew we were going ghost hunting, I'd have took that motherfucker off. <laughs> yeah, like, I only I'm saw not half. a real pirate. I do not need this on. But Rhonda waves as she slowly ascends, leaving them with the demon children. And again, go Rhonda. Oh, uh, yeah. I have no problem with this. And also, they don't attempt to climb the elevator or nothing. No, they're just like, like wait. Yeah. yeah, they're just like, oh, no. I guess we're yeah, meeting now. I would have tried to hang on or something. Yeah. Nope. At the top of the quarry, Rhonda slowly walks away and we just hear them screaming down there. Mm -hmm. She finds the witch hat for her costume and puts it on. Sam is there watching her. Yeah. They vaguely acknowledge each other as they just go their separate ways. Sup. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Back with Lori, she's walking down a pumpkin lined pathway in the woods. She hears twigs snapping behind her and turns around, confronting whoever's there to just come out. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens, but when she turns back around, Drac the Ripper is standing (laughs) in her path. What's crazy is Michael Dougherty said that they genuinely scared Anna Paquin there. Oh, man. And her scream is real. They said they cut it because two seconds later, she busted out laughing. (laughs) (laughs) That's That's great. At the party at Sheep's Meadow, Danielle is looking out into the woods, worried, and Janet tells her to relax, that Lori can take care of herself, but Danielle says she wishes that were true, but their mom always said that Lori was the runt of the litter. Back in the woods, Drac the Ripper attacks Lori and bites her neck as she screams. At the Sheep's Meadow party, somebody, one of the girls there screams as the Red Riding Hood costume falls out of a tree. Right. Now, I don't necessarily know how that happened. What are the logistics of this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't get it either. Um, but worried, Danielle goes over and pulls back the hood to reveal that it is not Lori. It is Drac the Ripper. Yeah. He just starts asking for help. Like all of his <laughs> badassery yeah. has just melted. I he's didn't mean scared. it. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, he's scared. We're in the point of view now of somebody walking toward the party and it's Lori. Danielle, instead of being like, What is going on? Why is this guy in your costume? You know. (laughs) Did you trade costumes? Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, you're late. Like, you know. So you're already like, huh? Mm -hmm. Lori says that she tried to play hard to get and he bit her. Danielle pulls her away and Janet goes to get her a drink. Maria, though, kneels down and takes the vampire teeth out of this dude's mouth. He's just wearing a fucking costume. Poser. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I thought you were a real vampire. Yeah. She takes off his mask and reveals him to be Principal Stephen Wilkins. (laughs) This dude Dude was fucking busy tonight. (laughs) Yeah, this was his date. (laughs) Hey, that is, yeah, I was going to say, he he said straight up, I got a date for the, No, I mean, but he attacked that lady. He's killed at least two kids. Yeah. (laughs) He, you know, taught his son how to cut up Charlie's head. Yeah. This dude, Halloween, he's busy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maria says that she likes him and she's glad that he's going to be Lori's first. Steven's like, who are you? (laughs) And Maria just laughs. But this is when he notices the dead men laying around the fire. Mm Mm-hmm. One of them is hot dog guy yes, from the party. Yes, I was about to say. So that. I guess <laughs> the coach. So I guess that pig uh, BF'd him. I don't want to yeah. say, <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Steven starts screaming and tries to get up, but his leg is badly broken oh, and protruding yeah. from yeah. his skin. 
Lori tells Danielle that she's nervous and Danielle again gives her the same advice to just be herself. Marilyn Manson's cover of Sweet Dreams Are Made of This starts playing as Lori goes over to Steven. She gets on top of him and tells her it's her first time, so just bear with her. All the other women start dancing, letting their hair down, taking their costumes off. One by one, they all shed their skin and start turning into fucking full-blown <laughs> werewolves. And these are practical effects for the most part. They, it looks, and it looks great. so yeah, good. Yeah, it looks real good. Typically speaking, a werewolf, like when you see a transformation in a movie, the hair grows on top uh-huh. of the skin. Yeah. They're ripping their skin off yes. to reveal the like inner werewolf. Which it's like... All these cheeky nods to just be yourself. Exactly. This is who they are. Yeah, I I didn't even pick up on any of that. The run of the litter and all that. Yeah, so much dialogue. And then at the um, when they're putting their costumes on, Maria says they all taste the same to me, and mm-hmm. it just sounded like some sexual like no, yeah. she they taste no, like she's did. eating yeah. them. Yeah. They were both delicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just there's a lot of foreshadowing to this moment, and you don't mm-hmm. even realize it until you watch it again. Yeah. And yes. it's, it's so smart and so like the payoff is so good. One thing I will say, as much as I love the song, mm-hmm. I don't feel like it fits here necessarily. It doesn't I, seem I, right. I, I, no, I, I kind of, cool. I kind of felt that too. They, Honestly, I was like, man, that kind of feels a little played out. Yeah. I like, I don't. It, it feels like if this movie came out in '97, yes. But the weird thing is that this wasn't even the original song that they wanted to use. Oh, uh, Michael Dougherty said that they were going to use "Fever" by Peggy Lee, which mm. I feel like would have fit better. It give, it would give it more of like a timeless thing, and it would fit into the seduction. I was aspect yeah. of it. I I was. Yeah, I feel like that would have made it kind of, even if we had the exact same visuals yes, and it was that song exact. instead, it would have played completely differently for me. 100%. Because Man- Manson's cover of that song is so like gnarly and like uh-huh. gritty. It's And a producer told him, they're like, we, no, we need it to be more. Uh, and so that's what they decided I kind on. of would have preferred Fever, I, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I felt like it would have changed it. It, kind of in a bad way for me because right. it would have made it not as serious. Because it would have been like, oh, now they're dancing and turning into <laughs> werewolves. But it's like, Ehh. You don't remember the verse she has on there about turning into a werewolf? Yeah, it's no. the third <laughs> verse. It's the best one. But and I do like that song, but I just, I don't know. <laughs> Something, I think, to me, it, it makes it more eerie. When it's Marilyn Manson, you're like, well, of fucking course. Oh, yeah, Marilyn Manson. I, I get that. Yeah. So you, you're not happy with either song. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if I'm going to be eaten by a werewolf, it would... I would much prefer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and another thing that they brought up on the commentary that blew my fucking mind mm. is that Sheep's Meadow, mm-hmm. that's on a sound stage. That's not a real forest. No, Those that, aren't... you that, could have fooled me. No, oh, yeah. that's I thought they were really literally insane. It's insanity. insanity. I'm not going to lie. I was like, damn, that's a nice ass place. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, can I go there? <laughs> that not with is... the werewolves. But... Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> that is mind blowing. Crazy. Just a credit to the set design. For real though. Like mm-hmm. ev- like they really just killed it on yeah. every facet Absolutely. to me. And it didn't even go to theaters. <laughs> Come on, man. It's not, not okay. No. But Lori tells Steven, as she's transforming, my, my, what big eyes you have. Which, you know, call back to Red Riding Hood, call back to werewolves. Mm-hmm. It's a little cheesy, but yeah, I, I love it. Was it was okay. Um, Insult to injury. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan. Of- <laughs> um, but then she turns and starts eating him. One of the werewolves, which I think is werewolf Danielle, <laughs> starts howling in approval because oh, she's yeah. kind of hovering over the situation. Well, she's proud of her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sam, though, is sitting on a log just yes. watching everything. Nobody's <laughs> like, what's that kid doing here? <laughs> it's crazy. But for the scene transition, his big round head turns into the moon that's in the sky for the next shot. Fantastic. It, it looks great. But now, and we get another little thing that says earlier in the comic book script. Now we're at Mr. Krieg's house. Remember Steven's neighbor? Mm -hmm. Trick-or-treaters come up to the house. And the house looks scary enough to have been decorated for Halloween, but it has not been decorated (laughs) for Halloween. (laughs) Um, They knock, and we hear several locks being disengaged before the door opens to complete darkness. They say trick or treat and glowing eyes appear and something growls. They drop their candy and run and it chases them. But it's just spite. The little dog we saw earlier (laughs) with the little mask that has glowing eyes on it. Mm -hmm. 
Krieg is amused. He <laughs> picks up the dropped candy and goes back inside. He grabs a handful of old photos and tosses them into his fireplace to keep the fire going, which I was like, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we see that he has a large scar on the side of his face. Mm hmm. Now, I know this guy is William Stryker from the X-Men movie. <laughs> yes. Um, which I did notice Rogue too, which is fantastic. Yes. <laughs> but I couldn't for the life of me figure out who this guy looked like. And then your sister told me, he said it was David Crosby. <laughs> and I was like, I know him, but I couldn't. He's like, like he's, yeah. he's a, mu a musician. What's his name? He was <laughs> going crazy. But Brian Cox did that on purpose. He was trying to look like David Crosby and John Carpenter. Okay. No, Which yeah. you can see okay. it. You can totally see yep. it. Yeah. Uh, both. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, you can tell his nose is a prosthetic. Yes. Yes. That's where I was like, what's happening here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But later, he's watching a Ron Popeil infomercial <laughs> with his dog. Mm -hmm. And he takes a bite out of one of those stolen candy bars and spits it out. Which I'm I, like, he's uh, like, I, I'm not he's, much uh, going for sweets. He's, he's so grumpy, he can't even enjoy the candy. No. But he spits it out and then puts the bar aside. He abandons it for a bottle of alcohol and starts drinking. Spite starts barking and Krieg goes to the window to see his gate swinging in the wind. Kids egg his window and run away. Mm-hmm. Now, he goes to his closet to get out a baseball bat. I'm like, is he about to fuck these kids <laughs> up? I think so, dude. But then he notices that Spite has gone outside through the doggy door. He's chewing on something and Krieg goes outside to call him in. Spite is chewing on the finger that yes. Steven yeah. tossed him earlier. Excellent tie-in. So good. Yeah. We see the same conversation with Steven, but from Krieg's side of the fence. So cool. Then we get, we're in the point of view of that same mask that was looking at Emma and Henry at the beginning of the movie. Mm -hmm. Back to the normal view, Krieg goes back inside and Spite is freaking out, barking at the front door. He flings it open, threatening with the bat, but no one is there. His yard, though, is completely filled with lit jack-o'-lanterns. Yeah, so it's like, what the yeah. fuck? I wouldn't even be mad, though. No, you I got mean, free it's cool. Halloween it decorations. Looks, it looks <laughs> everything great. Everything looks great. Um, he goes to smash one of the jack-o'-lanterns, but stops when Spite starts barking again. He goes back inside. Now, one super nitpicky, stupid thing that I'm like, oh, I wish they didn't do that. Oh, God. He comes back inside and we see Spite barking, and in the background, the doggy door is swinging back and forth. Then they zoom in on the doggy door, and it's like, oh, I wish yeah, they didn't zoom in, yeah. because seeing it in the background was honestly kind of creepy, because you're like, oh, shit. Like, it's why? like you got inside information. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Again, super nitpicky, but this movie is so smart that it kind of felt like it was dumbing it down. It was beneath them I can get to that. do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. But Spite whimpers and runs away. Krieg, smartly, I guess, abandons his bat for a shotgun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's more serious than he thought. Yeah. Yes. He looks upstairs and is calling out for spite. He flicks a light switch and a bulb at the top of the stairs explodes. Mm -hmm. And we see someone run by. <sighs> spite continues to whine. And so Krieg goes up the stairs, which I mean... He's worried about his dog. Well, yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm glad that they didn't make him a cartoon. Like, man, fuck that dog. Yeah. Like, he, he still <laughs> loves his dog. You know what I mean? He goes upstairs and goes into his bedroom to see something moving under the sheets. Now, it's like a toy. It's like a mummy hand that's moving. Yeah. yeah. I was like, he, okay. Did he have that around? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but a jack-o'-lantern on his bedside table that I'm sure was not there before <laughs> explodes flames. The light exposes the phrases trick or treat and give me something good to eat written on the wall in varying sizes. Now, this reminded me of The Shining. Yes. Take a shot. <laughs> this is very reminiscent of The Shining to me, mm -hmm. which again is another little nod. Yeah. Another nod. Someone reaches out from <laughs> underneath the bed and right. slices Krieg's Achilles tendon. Pet, Pet cemetery. cemetery. <laughs> But he goes down, and we finally see that the one causing all these problems is Sam. Krieg asks who he is, and Sam simply unwraps a candy bar that has a razor embedded in it. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this is the candy bar that he got from the principal's house. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> That's 
Another it's so good. Yeah. Um, but Krieg grabs his gun and shoots, but he hits the jack o' lantern. Sam has completely disappeared. <laughs> He limps down the hall, Krieg limps mm-hmm. down the hall and slips and falls down the stairs. We see now that the stairs and floor are covered in candy and glass and the glass is completely embedded in both of Krieg's hands. Horrible. Yes. There's a shot when he's looking up the stairs and then like a piece of candy like kind of yeah. tumbles down. This is a reference to the changeling because there's a scene in that movie where a ball rolls down the stairs and on the commentary, Michael Dougherty said that they got the same guy that shot that <gasps> shot in the changeling to shoot that shot oh, in yeah. Trick or Treat. <laughs> Just incredible. That's great. Krieg, with his messed up hands, goes over to his door and starts carefully undoing all of those locks. Mm-hmm. Now, where? When, at what point does adrenaline kick in? Because there'd be a me-shaped hole. I know. In, yeah, in no something, shit. right? Yeah. What door? Yeah, there is no door anymore. <laughs> I made my own. We see Sam peering down at Krieg from the second floor. He silently crawls across the ceiling and giggles as he is directly above Krieg. Krieg looks up and screams, and Sam screams, <laughs> and then drops down on him. A fight ensues and Krieg manages to throw Sam off of him. But he, then he goes to his window and is banging and begging Stephen for help as Stephen is going into his house. So now we see the other All side. The whole thing. Of course, when Stephen was like, screw, screw you. you. Oh. He goes yeah. back inside. But again, just like we saw, Sam tackles Krieg as soon as Stephen goes back in the house. Mm-hmm. Krieg rips Sam's bag mask off and reveals him to be some kind of sentient pumpkin creature. Yeah, I mean, much cuter with the mask on. Much oh, cuter. Yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Sam screams and takes out his candy bar shank and Krieg pushes him off. He grabs his gun, but then Sam starts chewing on his leg. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Krieg shoots Sam in the face. As Sam sits incapacitated against the wall, Krieg shoots his body and pumpkin guts fly yes, out. Yes, I heard that the pumpkin guts were not really pumpkin guts. They look just like pumpkin yeah, guts. Yeah, they were made out of yarn, string, and KY <gasps> jelly. It's like, why didn't you just use pumpkin <laughs> yeah, guts? Yeah, why didn't you? <laughs> Make it everything. It's like, oh, we don't use yeah. cows. So we just tape a bunch of cats <laughs> yeah. together. It's like, what the it hell? It looked just like pumpkin guts. Yeah. So, so he's a good pumpkin. Job. He's a I, pumpkin, yeah. I guess. Yes. But he has human hands. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's no real backstory yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> he shoots again and Sam's hand comes off. Krieg calls 911. But, you know, in his defense, he does everything that we yell at people in horror movies yes. to do. Yeah. He shoots Shoot the him. thing more Shoot than him once. again. Call the cop. Like everything he's, that, yeah. you know, he's, he's doing it right. Mm-hmm. But as soon as he gets through to 911, we see a shot of the phone cord being ripped out of the wall. <laughs> He hangs up, but when he turns around, Sam is still sitting where he was before. In this moment of calm, Sam's dismembered hand stabs Krieg in his leg with the candy bar shank. Mm -hmm. Sam's hand twitches and then retreats on his own, on its own, like the thing from Adam's family style. Or Evil Dead. Yeah, that too. (laughs) Krieg says, you got to be fucking kidding me. The thing. Which is a nod to the thing. Krieg grabs his gun, but it's empty at this point. Sam's hand scurries to his body and (laughs) taps it, waking it up. (laughs) Real quick, I'm glad that he ran out of bullets because in any other movie, he would have kept shooting. And that only takes two shells. He Mm would have shot it about eight times, (laughs) then reloaded it, and then just... Shot it eight more times. (laughs) Yeah. Sam reattaches his hand as Krieg just watches in horror. When when his hand reattaches, Krieg goes, oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> he does. Like, yeah. I can't what, even what kill this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Sam puts his mask back on and takes out the jack-o'-lantern lollipop that yes. we saw earlier and bites it into those sharp pieces. Krieg pulls the table that was next to his chair down and the big bottle of alcohol that he was drinking falls, as does the candy bar that he had (laughs) neglected earlier. Yeah. Krieg breaks that bottle and tries to use it as a weapon, but Sam just wrenches his arm and he he drops it. Yeah. Sam raises the lollipop and Krieg screams as Sam brings it down. Everything stops. We realize that Sam has only stabbed the candy bar that's yeah. that landed on Krieg. <laughs> he brings it to his mouth and just starts eating it. He turns around, 
walks away, the door opens for him, and then closes behind him. Now, I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth or nothing, but I'd be like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Yeah, I was like, wow. You know, uh, he all just, that he for, came, yeah, he yeah, came yeah, for the candy. Yeah. All right. We get a shot of the photos burning in the fireplace, and through an old photo of the murdered children and the bus driver, we can piece together that Krieg was that bus driver. Yes. Another fantastic yeah. tie-in. Now, I love this reveal that he is the bus driver. This connection is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. But the photo... When who took the photo? You know, like I feel I. There's really no other way to reveal this, but I'm not the largest fan of yeah. the photograph being the reveal. A parent took it, and and it's yeah, like this guy's he's gonna, gonna kill, kill us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he doesn't even look happy in the picture. No, he's like, I gotta kill these kids. Yeah. <laughs> we get a comic book later. Three trick or treaters come to the door, and Krieg all wrapped up. Mm -hmm gives them each a handful of candy out of his makeshift sling. And was this the candy that Sam... What, sprinkled around the yes. house? Yeah. It's like, there might be some glass in that. I don't know. Just be careful, yeah. all right? Check your candy. Exactly. One of the rules. We pan over to Billy next door, who is dressed like his dad, <laughs> glasses and bloody shirt and all, handing out candy on his steps. So he's a monster for Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now, across the street, Rhonda pulls her wheelbarrow full of pumpkins past Emma and Henry's house, narrowly escaping getting hit by a car. In this car are Lori, Danielle, Maria, and Janet. This just gives us more insight to what we saw at the beginning with the kid with the wheelbarrow almost getting hit by the car. I love it so much. Yeah. Putting it into context, yeah. which it's great. It's all the stories colliding into yep. one. You know, I know what's really dumb is that when we see this happening and all the stories are starting to make sense together, I got goosebumps. No, yeah. and <laughs> it's so good. I, I'm not that guy. I'm, I don't know. It was. It's just so good. No, it is. At the end of Krieg's yard, Sam stands just watching him. We see Emma and Henry returning home. Henry warns her against blowing out the candle, but she does it anyway. And I think that's when Sam was like, what did that bitch just uh, yeah. do? Yeah, well, I guess we my night's not done yet. Yeah. And now we see that it was Sam that was watching them from across the street. You thought Wilkins was busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sam's at Sheep's Meadow. He's yeah, at man. Glory. 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Henry tells Emma that she might upset someone by going against the rules. And she's just like, oh, yeah, who? And then Sam looks down at his lollipop mm -hmm. and crosses the street. Krieg goes back inside and there is immediately a knock on his door. He opens it to find the murdered children from yes. the quarry. The vampire boy holds out his bag and says, trick or treat. Krieg looks afraid and it fades to black. We see a cover of a comic book with the picture of the kids attacking Krieg. <sighs> so good. He ran out of candy. He ran yeah. Out of <laughs> and credits. <laughs> so what did you guys think of Trick or Treat? I love this movie mm -hmm. so much. The interplay between all the stories. It's just such a great horror anthology. It's well made. Yes. Um, one thing they did mention on the commentary that I didn't even catch was that each story basically takes an age group for Halloween and gives you a story oh, from their perspective. Man. You've got your first Halloween learning to carve a pumpkin. You've got a teenager doing hood red shit with your friends. Yep. <laughs> you've got you're in your 20s where everybody's just trying to get laid. Yeah. And then you've got your old age where you're like, fuck Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody is represented. Oh, it's so man. smart and just good. I can't praise this movie enough. Yeah. Uh, I uh, same thing. Yeah, I I loved this movie, and then watching it, like you said, there was even parts where we missed. Yeah, yes! that was still I was like, <laughs> what the hell? But watching it again, you catch stuff. Like like I said, I didn't ever realize they bumped in to Emma and her boyfriend a right. few times. I'd never. Yeah, even, we yeah. see them like peppered throughout. Yeah, <laughs> at all. But watching it again and paying attention, like, it's like, oh, are. that's badass. Yeah. It was like that's really cool. Oh, very quick. Like I said at the beginning where you mm -hmm. see those zombies out of frame that's them leaving Krieg's house that's after killing so him good. and they yeah. show you in like one of the first scenes see that's scenes. cool yeah. and I missed that yeah. I, I, I didn't never see that noticed either. that it's amazing yeah, I didn't see that either I love this movie from the first time I saw it to the last time I watched it <laughs> it is required Halloween viewing for me at Absolutely. this point it's creepy it's funny it's just 
it's the perfect mix. It's so great. It's, I mean, <laughs> I, I love it. I love Trick or Treat. And I guess that brings us to ratings. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit torn. I don't know if how much I love this movie <laughs> maybe clouds my judgment or influences a little bit. But I mean, of course it does. Yeah. Um, I would recommend this movie to anyone. It is a great time. Again, no matter how many times you've seen it, there's always going to be something more to find. And mm -hmm. you're always going to enjoy it. I, I can't get sick of it. All that being said... On a scale from one to ten razor blade candy bars, <laughs> I'm going to give Trick or Treat nine out of ten razor blade candy bars. And I will now open up the floor. I also enjoyed this movie a mm -hmm. lot. And it was more of not only what everything was great, mm -hmm. but it was more that it was only an hour and 22 minutes, I, but it didn't feel like it was short. Insane. Can't believe it. They fit everything in and the way the stories like intermingled with each other and didn't like mess up the other one mm -hmm. or it didn't complicate anything. It was just there. To piggyback on that, the timeline is yes. correct. No, yes, yes. yes. Like that <laughs> That yeah. was that was the one thing too that I was like, this all fits together. Yes. It's not like, well, how could this kid have been over here getting <laughs> the pumpkins from people for their scavenger hunt when this was happening over there? But it all makes sense. Yes. And it shows you and it gives you like the clues, like with the runt of the litter yes. and uh -huh. the, they all taste the same and you don't you don't think about it until the end, and then you're like, "Oh shit!" She or was, even yeah. Even the next time you watch it, no, yes. yeah, you're like, "Oh yeah." Um, but I did, and I do. Like you said, I recommend anyone watch this movie, and it's it's it was just great. Mm -hmm. It was good yeah. from beginning to end. It was a fun time. It wasn't go like goofy, scary to mm -hmm. where like it's like, "Oh, this is like some scary movie shit" or whatever. But it wasn't like too scary to where it's like, oh shit, the kids can't watch this or what? Which, yeah. Right. I don't know if they I can. I mean, they can't but, watch yeah, it. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it. There's a balance here that I feel like some movies can achieve, and Agreed. this one did. To me, that's what sets it apart for me mm -hmm. because it does find that perfect balance in storytelling mm -hmm. and having the different stories together and the characters and one doesn't overpower the other one. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a harmony. Yes. In an hour and 22 minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to stick in the realm of where you were at and I'm going to give Trick or Treat eight razor blade candy bars out of 10 like i said it's uh, it's it, it is a good movie and i will watch it watch it and over but that's that's me i feel comfortable right with mm -hmm. an eight but i i i do i love this movie yeah and you don't even have to watch it during halloween no you can watch Literally. it whenever Anytime. but it, it like i said it's just the story and the way they did it and the every everything was was great mm -hmm. i uh Agree with everything you both said. I can't, <laughs> I don't want to repeat everything, so I'll just piggyback instead. It's just a great movie. Mm -hmm. Well directed, well paced, well acted, well written, well shot. This is a clean looking movie. Yeah, I love it. But I guess to keep things short, <laughs> instead of heeping more praise, Michael Dougherty is just like no, keep no, right, keep, keep going. going. I I am going to have to give Trick or Treat eight point five. Razor blade candy bars out of 10. I don't mean to split the difference, but right. here we are. <laughs> um, I love this movie. It's a Halloween staple. Mm -hmm. Like JP said, doesn't even have to be Halloween. You can watch it anytime. Yeah. You'll love it. I would recommend it to anybody to watch it. This is a horror anthology done right. Absolutely. Where the segments don't overpower yeah. each other. Each one is necessary and the intermingling and interplay between them. Fantastic. Interestingly, a while ago, and by the time this episode comes out, it might be announced or something but dr wolfila was speculating on twitter that there might be something coming down the pipeline for Yay! trick or treat because legendary pictures changed their banner on twitter to include sam's oh. pumpkin lollipop oh, all right so, don't play with yeah, me <laughs> whether that's a seasonal thing they're just having some fun or if they're like no we're gonna announce something yeah. oh man but he's he Dr. Wolfie has speculated maybe something on HBO Max because Michael oh, Dougherty is in great. with them. But well, I'm here. I'm here yeah. for yeah, it. Hey, that fingers would crossed. Be great. It'd be the perfect time for it. Absolutely. And like I said earlier, I also love it because uh, 
Rogue and William Stryker. <laughs> I like those those first X Men movies. I know a lot of people give them shit, <laughs> but but I, I enjoy they set the them. tone right. <laughs> Well, that's all from us at Podmortem. What would you rate Trick or Treat and what should we watch next? Let us know on Twitter at the Podmortem. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook. Be sure to follow each of us on Twitter at Blood and Smoke, at Real Streeter 84 and at Travis MWH. And remember, always follow the rules of Halloween. Until next time. <laughs>